When my faith is shaken, I will remember your words written on the tablet of my heart. In them, I will find your comfort and home. Mega hit songwriter, performer, and 2020 Songwriter Hall of Fame nominee, Kent Blasey is truly one of the most sought after country music writers of all times. Raised in Lexington, Kentucky, he made his way to Nashville when a friend encouraged him to reach for his dream. Little did he know that his songs performed by such talents like Garth Brooks, Diamond Rio, Patti Loveless, and many more would touch lives around the world with number one hits such as If Tomorrow Never Comes. Not knowing that many years later, that song that was sung by Garth would be meant for him and his faith when he lost his wife to cancer. This is his story of unshakable faith. This is Today's Nashville. Kent, thank you so much for inviting me into your beautiful home. You have quite a view here in Nashville. I do. I lived on another street down the road, and I didn't realize there was anything up here. And it came up for sale, and I was like, I believe this could be a creative place. So did you build it, or did you buy it? Or? It was built uh, in 1965 by a bachelor, and uh, another neighbor on the street figured out how to have houses up here, and so he had all his friends buy houses. So there was like six of them that all lived together up here. Well, it is gorgeous. <laughs> I bet it inspires you a lot. You know, I. I read uh, your bio, and you are an amazing songwriter. Thank you. And you've just been nominated as uh, the songwriter in 2020 for the Hall of Fame. Correct. So congratulations for that. Thank you. It's uh, amazing, and there's going to be a double ceremony for last year because of COVID and this year, uh, November 1st. So, Well, take me back and tell me where it all started. And let's talk about songwriting because we talked earlier and you know, a lot of people think that most of the music artists, they write their own songs and, and produce them, but it really doesn't work that way, does it? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but Nashville is known as the songwriter community around the world and there's more artists that record outside material here than anywhere else. Most of the pop people write their own songs, and it's getting that way more in country, but uh, it's still a great song will find its way to an artist, and that's what it's always about. Take me through your journey. You were born in... I was born in Woodstock, New York, before it was Woodstock, New York, but the great thing about that was it was an artistic community already. Um, it had the Hudson Valley painters kind of came from there. Uh, artists and actors would come up from New York City to do the playhouse there. And so as a little kid, I would go to somebody's house and they'd be working on a huge painting and they'd say, well, this is something I'm trying to finish. Or I'd meet an uh, author and he'd say, this is a book I wrote, let me autograph it for you. And to me, that's where the first inspiration came from of, man, these people are doing what they love and they're making a living. And my dad worked for IBM and he always told me, go do what you love, don't do what I had to do. And uh, so that, those two things together kind of set the seed that you could be creative and make a living at it. And then we moved to Lexington, Kentucky because IBM used to stand for I've been moved. And so we moved down to the southern city from New York and that was a big change. But that way I kind of started hearing country music and bluegrass music and all that kind of thing that I probably wouldn't have heard up there. And so I'm a melding pot of what I learned up there and what I learned in Kentucky. And um, I ended up getting a guitar. I had already been writing poetry and had uh, some stuff published like in high school yearbooks and whatever else it was. And so the minute I got a guitar, it's like, well, okay, I'm going to start putting my own words to music. Mm -hmm. And uh, just started and kept going. And um, Kentucky was not too far away from Nashville, so I would come down here and pitch my songs. And through these little things, I call them God winks, I guess, where 
one little thing leads to another little thing that leads to another little thing. And uh, so I just had different people telling me I needed to move to Nashville, Tennessee. So when did you get to Nashville? 1980. 1980. And like everybody else, like we were talking about, no money in your pocket, just a lot of big dreams. And you get here and you kind of start trying to find your way. And um, Is that what happened to you? That's what happened to me. And I knew two people when I moved to town. One was in the music business and one wasn't. And um, I started knocking on doors and trying to meet people. And I met a guy who uh, needed a tape copy guy. And back then, it was all reel to reel. So the tape copy person had to splice the tapes of the songs that they were going to pitch to the artist. So that's what I did. And then he found out I played guitar. And so he started using me on recording sessions. And then he said, well, maybe we ought to write a song together. So we started writing songs together. And he and I had my first top five record with a song called Hitter for a Heartache. And um, it kind of took off from there. Wow. And so what happened after that? It was one of those things that, so I came to town. And I told my wife, it's probably going to take four years. It's kind of like going to college. You're going to have to meet people. You're going to have to build up uh, your resume. And so I got lucky. And in two years, I had a top five record with Hit It for a Heartache. And about the same time, I got six or seven other songs recorded, like in a two-week period. And I thought, this is really easy. Why didn't I come earlier? But then I kind of went through a spell where country music was going through this switch from urban cowboy to the Randy Travis country, Alabama. And so things were changing. And so I was writing for some different companies, getting cuts, but not big singles or anything. So I started a recording studio because I could play a lot of instruments. And so I started doing demos for other writers and doing my own demos. And that's how I started meeting all these people that would become famous artists because they all wanted to sing demos because in Nashville back in the 80s it wasn't there wasn't any uh, Instagrams and Facebooks and all the things the artists have to do these days it was just kind of word of mouth and so in my demo studio I was using people like Billy Dean and Faith Hill and Trisha Yearwood and Martina McBride and none of them could get record deals That's amazing. and so that's how I met Garth because he was cleaning churches and selling boots. And he thought, well, maybe I could make more money singing demos than cleaning churches and selling boots. And so he came over and he uh, played me a cassette. You don't remember cassettes. But, I do remember cassettes. <laughs> uh, and I said, yeah, I'll start using you on some demos. And so that's how we met. We became friends. And um, at the time, you know, he, he didn't have a record deal. He didn't have really anything going on. but. Um, when he was leaving that very first day, his manager who came with him, Bob Doyle, said, well, Garth writes a little bit, too. So we set up a time to write, and we wrote the first song together was If Tomorrow Never Comes. And we pitched it around town for about a year, and we pitched Garth around town for about a year. And people said, nobody's going to sign a guy named Garth. You know, can you hear a DJ saying, that's Garth? No, he's not going to get a record deal. Nobody wanted our song. And so one night, he got to sing one song at the Bluebird Cafe. Somebody from Capitol Records was in the audience to hear somebody else. And when they heard Garth do that song, they said, I know we passed on you for the third time this week, but maybe we missed something come back in. So he got his record deal. And uh, If Tomorrow Never Comes ended up being his second single and his first number one. So that's the magic and miracles of Nashville. And I've seen it so many times with so many people. And there's no guarantee just because you're amazing as a singer or a songwriter that anything's going to happen. It takes a whole lot of other variables to go into it. So it's a, an interesting business. Mm -hmm.